Hey everybody, this is Ask the Sensei. Um, I'm Tish Hicks. I'm the Master Sensei of the BO Dojo in Burbank, California. Um, very rainy Burbank, California today. Um, yeah. And uh, this is our free monthly Q&A webinar. Um, um, I'm here each month. Um, our amazing Techno Sensei Dan Leonard is here to lend his insights into all things technical and all of his insights from his own voiceover perspective. And each month we are joined by a guest sensei, and we're really excited to have Kay Bess uh, join us. She is another amazing voiceover colleague uh, based here in LA. Um, Dan, you want to talk a little bit about what you're up to and what you do? And Well, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, right now I'm recovering from a long trip in Europe, <laughs> uh, more than anything else. Uh, my, uh, my area of focus is uh, home voiceover studios and how to properly do it and making sure that people pay no attention to retail people who say you need to have a full recording studio with the guitars hanging on the wall and a big window and all that stuff, which is absolute nonsense. Uh, our job is to keep things incredibly simple and that's what we do and that's what I teach people. And just remember, it's not, the idea is not to sound great, it's to sound like you. And the addendum to that that we've come up with now is the idea is not to sound great. The idea is to not sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> Take it down to the brass tacks. That's, that's what we're talking about. Yay. And Kay, so glad to have you here. Can you tell us a little bit about you and what you're up to? And sure. Um, and I have been a voice actor for about 33 years. Um, Primarily, the, most of those years I have made my living doing commercials and promos and uh, narration. And I still do a, a bit of each of those things, although the business has changed such uh, that there are lots of other avenues um, and, and opportunities in voiceover. And uh, in the last five years or so, I've really narrowed my focus to uh, video game and animation work. And um, so I, I sort of feel like I have a, I'm blossoming into a new career <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because it's, it's such a different world than the commercial world. But, um, but I, um, I love what I do. I, I have a home studio uh, and as Dan says so aptly, you know, it is far from perfect. It's in my hall closet. <laughs> um, and it gets the job done. Um, it is not perfectly, uh, it's not perfectly soundproofed, but, um, but it's, but it's a good sounding room and, uh, things go to broadcast from it. And so, um, I, I, you know, I've spent a lot of time moving from one, when I started in voiceover, nobody had home studios. Mm -hmm. There were no MP3s, you know? Um, and so it's been an interesting transition and, um, and a real lesson, I think, for, for me to, uh, to move with the times and to move with the changes. And it's constantly evolving and to embrace, um, to embrace the change. Um, because if you don't, you won't work anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's been a really big piece of why I think I'm still going, you know, after 33 years, is that I've been willing to kind of embrace all of these changes that go along. So yeah. And I think, you know, I think that there's a couple of things that, that you said that, that um, is really, really at the heart of what we do here at the dojo. First thing you said, I love what I do. Yeah. Um, I've just been, uh, we're coming to the last weeks of a, of a virtual You Should Do voiceover intensive, which is the, the intro class that we do. And I'm watching, I'm watch, watching people's eyes and hearts open to the work in that way, like when you meet that, that person, and you tell your friends like, I don't know, I just really, I really like them. Like I feel like myself with them and you can feel that like, yeah. that. oh, you, this is great. You're falling in love with this work. That's yeah. what it takes. Cause then you, then you build a lifelong relationship with it and there's things that are harder and shift and you have to keep that, that yeah. love 
that love going. And then just the evolution. We always have to shift and change with it. So um, it's not like, yeah, I've arrived. <laughs> like, all right, here we go. Um, so yeah, we're always, no <laughs> yeah, we're always, we're always staying on top of the game. So awesome. So Janice asks a really interesting question. I'm auditioning, but not booking. Any wisdom? Yes. <laughs> Well, <laughs> um, I would say this, uh, um, just, just, just to give some perspective, I don't know, Janice, how much you're auditioning. Um, but, um, as an, as just as an example of my shift into animation, um, I started auditioning for animation about what is it, 2019, Pro probably five years ago. And I, my agent is very supportive and sent me a lot of copy, uh, uh, animation copy. Mm -hmm. And I probably auditioned hundreds, hundreds of times before I booked my first small animation role. Um, that was really a small role, it took three years bef before I booked, um, before I booked my first animation. So I think a piece of working in our home studios by ourselves, you know, without a sense of, you know, being around a, a lot of people who are, you know, doing the same thing we're doing, we get this sense that we're the only ones who aren't booking, right? And I, I mm -hmm. think it's really a long game. And, uh, and I think that, that to really keep your sanity, uh, you have to view the audition as the job. Mm -hmm. um, that that's really what I do for a living. I audition for a living. And when I get a booking, it's like a surprise to me still after all these years, like, wow, <laughs> you know, something finally happened. So, um, so I, will say, I will say that a piece of it is perspective. I don't know how often you, you've been booking uh, I'm sorry, how often you've been um, auditioning, but I will say if it's, if it's a few times a week or even if it's a few times a day, I was reading animation copy every day for three years. So truly it was hundreds and hundreds of things <laughs> that I auditioned for that I did not book. So um, I think a lovely thing to do is to find kind of a posse of friends through whom you can share your auditions and check in and say, does this sound good? Does this sound competitive? Am I on the mark? Um, and if, if they say, yes, you are, that sounds great. Um, then just keep the faith, you know, and keep, keep moving forward. Um, keep auditioning. Um, and, uh, and eventually something will pop. Um, it's just a long, long game. And there are thousands of us who are auditioning. So um, when it's your turn, it will be your turn. And it will be because you were absolutely perfect for the job. So, yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts, Dan? I know you've, you are, you've had like times when you've been on the call where you're like, grum, grum, not happening. And then like, oh, excuse me, I'm so busy. Gotta go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I know you. I know you deal with this journey as we all do. <laughs> yeah. Well, as as I try to explain to everybody, this business is like you know the the political winds in you know in the world. It's it's like this. There's no rhyme or reason to the pattern. Uh, you know, things were you know for me it was very very quiet at the beginning of this year, and then all of a sudden somebody opened a valve and it's coming all. <laughs> it, it, it there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's uh, you know, you've got to do, you've got to do your homework. You've got to do your due diligence. You have to do your marketing, all the things that, you know, that, that you're learning at the dojo and, and learning, you know, just from all the stuff you read online and applying yourself and it will happen eventually. Uh, and if it doesn't, then you have to examine what are some of the factors that are preventing, causing or preventing that. Mm -hmm. And it's not one thing. And, uh, and it's, actually kind of hard to determine unless you ask somebody specifically well you know why am i not booking and when's the last time okay someone actually told us the answer to that uh <laughs> you know it, it just doesn't happen um it's it, you just got to have faith in yourself and <coughs> you've got it and your coaches think you've got it 
then just you just have to have faith in yourself and keep pushing along. And uh, you know, if you start to starve, well, then you know, you, you might want to reconsider what you're doing. Yeah. But, okay. Okay. I wait. I waited tables for ten years alongside my my voice acting career. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, and there there ain't no shame in it. It's like. Um, we do what we have to, to to keep a roof over our heads and food in our bellies and um again it's a it's a big it's a big long process you know it's a it's a, again it's a long game i really believe that. i think i think that is the key i was i was just i think uh, melly's on the call and that's something we were just talking about on a on a, on a voice over once ever call just before this call um but the more you can keep that that perspective of it is a long haul um um metaphor well so many so many things in my head um so first of all this internal game this internal game is one of the most important elements right so because one of the things that happens when you're not booking then your mind goes because i suck because something's wrong and then you go because it'll never work and then it starts spiraling downwards these this thought. So how do you keep yourself in the in the positive, in the vision, on the trail? That's that's part of one of the challenges. That's one of the skill sets that you need to develop to be in any performing arts, but um, you know, being a performer in any realm, but particularly in this, because I think more and more, as Kay said, we're isolated, we're solitary. Um, so how do you keep that, how do you keep that conduit strong and your your uh, mental game? and spiritual game clear is is one thing and then in terms of this whole big scope of things um if you look at it like um being a fisher person right um when we started in this game it was a whole different game that you if you wanted to be in the game at the biggest levels then you got you moved to the major market you got your skills up to get to the major agencies which had relationships with the all the advertising people and that was the only place that you got copy so in this fisher person metaphor um it was like a trout pond once you got to the trout pond you put your thing in and then something came out and now it's really different yeah. we we're working rivers oceans um lakes um we have to be able to fish in a lot of different areas and check our check our nets and make sure our bobbers full and stuff like that so it, it is it is very different but a fisher person doesn't say oh i didn't catch anything today <laughs> um you have to keep on going out and then you know, try a different base, try a different, you know, so, so you have to kind of keep on thinking in all of those terms. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, and then, you know, seeing, seeing and trying what's, what's, what's working. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, a re really big piece of keeping the sanity and, and keeping, keeping your sense really is connecting with other people. I mean, mm -hmm. I truly have this tiny little, posse of people that when we all talk to each other about what we're booking, what we're not booking, what, you know, and if mm -hmm. we're feeling insecure about what we're doing, we truly send our auditions to each other mm -hmm. and say, you know, how was that? I mean, and, yeah. and so to be able to cultivate a small group of people who you really trust, who will not only, you know, who will celebrate you when you win, <laughs> you know, um, and won't sort of, uh, get that sort of envy thing up, you know, where, yeah. it, you know, I just find that to be truly helpful um, yeah. in keeping my, keeping my sanity. Also, ta I, ta I don't know how many people are, are represented here, but if you are, you know, a big piece of, of finding out where I am is staying in contact with my agent and saying, mm -hmm. Every once in a while, not every week, not every, <laughs> not even every month, maybe twice a year, you know, where mm -hmm. I say, checking in with you and I'm making sure that my reads are competitive mm -hmm. and, and listen to the answer. And in the beginning of my animation journey, the answer was, they're, 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 they're okay, they're okay, but you need some work in this area. And I was like, great, I'm going to go get work. Yeah, and that's I, I'm gonna go you know, learn in that area. And that, that made all the difference, but being open to constructive criticism, uh, being willing to learn, 
all those keep your head in the game, right? A yeah. sense of humility about the whole thing. Yeah, that's um, that's still have something to learn, no matter how long we've been here, you know. Mm -hmm. So and the dojo, that's one of the rules of rules of voiceover. The fifth rule of voiceover is cultivate beginner's mind. Yes. Humility, determination, yeah. curiosity. Yeah. And then in terms of what, uh, other things at the dojo, um, you know, we, have a, we have a working pro workout called the um, nth degree, right? We belt, belt levels, you get your black belt, now you're ready, now your work begins. So the nth degree is a working pro uh, yeah. workout that does exactly what Kay is talking about. We get together, we check in once a week, we work out, it we uh, listen to each other. So um so that's that's something it seems like a lot of us are here so um this is good it's so interesting how in depth you can get on one question that is really <laughs> the crux of everything um dan there yes. is another crux of everything tech question um what type of mic do you recommend for a beginner and i guess it kind of goes what kind of mic do you recommend for anybody or, or, or right. is there a distinction between a beginner and a, and a not beginner? No, I, I, again, here's, this is one of those uh, equipment questions that is going to drive you in the wrong direction. It is not the equipment that gets you work. You, and again, as I said earlier, you don't want to sound, you, you, you want to sound good, but you don't want to sound bad. So you don't get a bad microphone, you get a good microphone. And, but a good microphone is a studio condenser microphone that is over $150. Anything more than that is going to, the, the more expensive the <laughs> microphone gets, the more critical the environment in which you record becomes. So you need to have something that is, you know, and there, there's a lot of different manufacturers. The stuff about, I wanna find the right microphone for my voice is something that is so beyond your understanding and so beyond what you need to know. The fact of the matter is, is the microphone you have is the microphone you have. Now, if you have a $20 you know, old Radio Shack microphone, that's not going to cut the mustard. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are good microphones that are in the $150 to $200 range from Audio-Technica, from AKG. Uh, but, you know, you start going into the Sennheisers and the, and the, uh, the Neumanns, none of these items will change the way you interpret and read copy. So don't, start, don't get sucked into these vortexes of discussion. Oh, this mic makes me sound great. Oh, that mic makes me sound great. You know, you don't buy great equipment to get work. You work to get great equipment. Mm -hmm. you've, got to, you've got to be able to invest when you can afford to invest because investment in equipment is not what's going to make the difference between you booking work and not. So you get yourself a competent microphone, and I could throw out a bunch of names like an AKG uh, P220 uh, or 240 or uh, an Audio Technica of you know, uh, 2035 or 4033 or one of those. I mean, they're just numbers. Anything that is above 150 to $250 will be fine. Anything more than that is more than you need to spend. So, you know, and whatever you do, Know what you want before you walk into a retail store or contact somebody from a, uh, a retailer online. Never ask them what is the right microphone. Right. You know, so I was working with somebody this morning at 7 a.m. Uh, <laughs> who was, uh, you know, she had bought an interface that was $1,300. And I'm like, who suggested that you buy this? And it was causing a problem. I'm like, you know, for that, you can actually get a better computer and a number of other things, and it was causing your problems. You, mm. you don't want to buy a control room for a nuclear reactor to control a hamster uh, running in a wheel. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, I mean, these are important metaphors, but stop overthinking the equipment. It's just not something you, you, want, to, you want to like think about that, that much. I was just there at are, the, oh, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I'm just saying that, you know, there, there are things out there but essentially, they're all essentially the same. Mm -hmm. So don't go expensive. Go, you know, go what you can afford. Can you can you type in some of those suggestions, um, sure. Dan? And because sometimes I think when we know what we're talking about, that it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's la 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 la. But then everyone else is like, wait, wait, what, what, what was that? So um, that I think that would be really helpful. Um, I was just at the auto show. Um, 
And uh, it sounds like the thing that came to my mind, Dan, when you were talking is, it's great if you have a Bugatti, but if you don't know how to drive, it doesn't matter, <laughs> right? And if you get if you get a BMW, that's great. And then there's a lot of maintenance that is involved in that as well. So I think you can kind of think about that in terms of microphones as well um, and your equipment in general. Does it get you to the grocery? Where do you need to go? To the grocery store. Does this get you to the grocery store? Yes. Um, <laughs> do you need to, do you need to go to the grocery store in zero to 60 seconds? Uh, probably not. Right. But that's an interesting way to, to think. Yeah, and then I, also don't go into a car sales place and go like, hi, I'd like to buy a car. <laughs> um, I used to talk about, uh, pro tools, you know, I used mm -hmm. pro tools for a while and I, I gave it up, uh, maybe a decade ago and, and <laughs> like, Pro Tools is like driving, this is my standard line, right? That it's like driving, a, it's like flying a 747 <laughs> grocery store. It's, I don't need all that. I, I, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, very, very simple software like Twisted Wave or, or Sound Studio, you know, they're, they're so simple to use and it's just what we need to, to record auditions, one track, you know, uh, but it's so true. It's like, you don't need all the big fancy bells and whistles. Um, you uh, know, it's, yeah. it's really, really true. It's very, very um, wise advice from Dan and from Tish. Yeah. Um, we got five more minutes with Dan. Any other questions? About there was a question there about Source Connect. Oh, uh, yeah. That's is there, are there any parameters or benchmark to determine the time to invest? Well, when they ask for it. <laughs> exactly. You know. You, 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 like again, you don't. I mean, Source Connect. You can have Source Connect now. I'm I'm starting to think that some of these these systems, if you're not doing promo, if you're not doing stuff uh, that really requires you to be on call or anything like that, you don't need it quite yet. On call. That's, that's and then you did. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you know, it, it, when you buy those, is when someone says you need Source Connect Pro now because I'm going to hire you and I'm going to be keeping using you. That's when you get it. You don't get it to get you to attract people. Oh, I have Source Connect. Big deal. You know, doesn't really mean anything. Um, well, and I think uh, that's that's another way that things have gotten so much simpler, right? I mean, yeah. back in the days, like, oh, ISDN, whoa, wow, and hmm, we've got a hmm, that must be, and now it's kind of like, uh, yeah, uh, okay, right? <laughs> like, it's not, it's not hard to, it's not, it's not inexpensive, but it's not massively expensive and it's not it's it's simple to implement and and use right so another place where it's gotten simpler um cool hopefully that ans answers your question sandy um and dan uh do, 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 do. oh i think there's one more question here on the chat from jim sharkey um, currently doing audacity class, learning about all the bells and whistles, removing plosives, right, do you right, polish right. up your auditions before sending them out ju beyond just equalization? Well, and again, you know, if you know, this is, this, this is the other metaphor I use. It's, it's a, it's actually an acronym. I call it whistle, what it's supposed to sound like. And anytime you start to adjust things to make it sound to please your ear, you are essentially taking a screwdriver and putting it in your back. Because if you don't know what specifically it's supposed to sound like, if you're trying to do it to please your ears, you have to realize that most people are listening to it you know, on their iPhone or on the speakers on their, their laptop. These are not going, most of the stuff we're sending out is not going to some big studio where they've got huge studio monitors and all that stuff. They just want to hear that you understand the copy, and that you get it, and that you're, doesn't sound like you're reading it. The rest of this is so, it, it's so consuming in people's minds. Get it out of your mind. It's not important. <laughs> Don't do anything. All you have to do is get the physical sound of your studio right. There are three things, and I'm constantly reminding people. The acoustics of the room you're in, you know, no sound coming in, no sound reflection. Two. Proper mic technique. See how I'm using this microphone? Here's it sound, here how it sounds like I'm in the same room with you. That's, that's proper mic technique and setting proper levels. 
If you do those three things, you shouldn't have to do anything else. The mm. idea is to sound like you as you exist. So stop thinking about all those bells and whistles and polish. You know what else, you know what that makes me think of, Dan? Preach. I'm just like, Dan says something and then I'll think of a metaphor. Um, but it's kind of, it's kind of like, um, like a Whole30 diet, right? Like, don't eat processed foods. Like, just eat foods like that are in, in, their, in their form that they are intended oh, and yeah, yeah. Eat, eat things that are good for you and don't eat like bags of Fritos and pastries and stuff like that. But, but if, you think about, if you think about that metaphor, all of the things that we're talking about, the engineering, you know, processing the sound, it, it actually kind of fits. Like if you just think, have a banana. Um, that's, that's an interesting way to, to think about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dan, I know you have to roll. How do yeah. people, how do people um, keep in touch with you? And can you tell uh, us a little bit about VOBS and good things? You got? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, you can find me at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yes, I got that URL. Don't ask me why nobody else came <laughs> up with it. HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. Uh, I have a, uh, uh, you know, I do consultations, uh, you know, through the dojo, and uh, you know, I, I will teach you from soup to nuts how to get it done. Uh, I have a specimen collection cup on my on my site that you <laughs> click on, and you can send me your raw audio so I can hear what your you know your studio sounds like. And if there are any adjustments that we can make from that, you know, we can do that. And I'm also offering direction services too for auditions and mm -hmm. things like that. And, that's uh, great, yeah. You know, and, and that site, uh, the the, the vodirector.com is is in development right now. So, uh, um, homevoiceoverstudio.com is the easiest way to contact me. Yeah. Oh, and Voiceover Body Shop is on. You know, constantly there are over like a two hundred episodes of that. Uh, we interview great people like Kay and Utish, and and then my co-host George Whittem and I uh, do Tech Talk every other week, where we talk about everything tech to try and get you to not think about the tech. <laughs> Ironically, yeah. yeah. Well, George tends to go a little bit deep into it, and I'm like, so what you mean is uh, <laughs> have a banana. <laughs> Awesome. Anyway, it's great well, to see you. everybody. Uh, hey, always a pleasure to see you. And uh, listen to what these ladies have to say. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Dan. Bye. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Uh, awesome. Good questions, guys. Good, good questions. Um, I am noticing that there's, a, there's two threads that I'd love to make sure that we touch on. One is, what did you say in Atlanta? Because everyone's like, oh my God, it was so amazing. So that would be one thing to talk, talk about that. But I think the, the underlying thing is union versus non-union work, which is, uh, you know, we've got a lot of folks, we've got a lot of folks on the call that are in working pro mode and Lordy knows it's something that's a thing, isn't it? So, um, yeah, Becky's got a question about that. Uh, Pilar does. Um, yeah, there's a, the, it's, it's a little bit in the zeitgeist. Um, yeah. And then Becky has another, yeah, cause another, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then how do you talk to people about it? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's put those questions kind of in the, on the table here. Great. Um, I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. All I, all I have is my own experience. Um, I am a union actor. Um, and the reason that I do very, very little commercial work anymore is because the vast majority of it has gone non-union. Mm -hmm. um, and I, <laughs> I, my feeling is if you join the union, you've made a commitment to it. Um, and you've made a you've made a commitment to uh, your fellow actors um, to to do union work in support of the business that we all um, that we all love. You know, I I'm I'm almost 58 years old. Um, I am looking at the you know my retirement in a, in a decade or so, right? Like uh, in terms of being able to retire. You know? <laughs> And if I, I hope I never stop working, but, but the, and I don't have plans to, but the fact that I've got uh, a pension from, 
Mm -hmm. both unions, I was a member of two unions before they merged, um, and the fact that I have health care and I will have senior performers health care um, when I turn, I, I think it's 62 or, or 65. Um, and so I am a fan of the union and I, and I support it and I believe in it. All of that said, if you're not union, if you are not a member of the union and you intend to do non-union work, don't join the union. <laughs> I, I think if you if you um, if if you join, that's that's sort of that's the word you're giving. You know, to, to you're you're signing on the dotted line that you are going to work in the union. Um, I know people who uh, are Phi Core. Um, I think uh, that that works for them. Um, it, it's. It's not, it's not a thing that I sort of stand on a soapbox and say, hey, you can have it all if you, if you go by core. It is, it is uh, however, a real option and I, um, it, it's there. And so I think that's just up to the individual to determine whether or not it's right for them. Um, but, I, but I do, my, my experience has been, you know, when commercial work started to go away, I, I didn't jump the line and sort of say, well, now I'm going to do non-union work because I have to put food on the table. Every, every one of us needs to put food on the table. That's, that's just a matter of course. Um, I shifted my perspective. You know, I, I adapted, if you will, um, to the, to the brave new world that's out there. Um, so, uh, I may, I don't, judge people for the decisions that they make you know we all have to do our own internal self-examination about that but if you ask me that is what i would say you know um i'm a fan of it because of the protections built in and and we all struggle with our sense of worth you know and ha and what do we um what should we charge and you know all of that <laughs> um it, it all by being a union member, so many of those things have been worked on and thought out over decades and decades and decades of, of the hard work of, of people like me, you know, who, who've been willing to get, get in the trenches. Uh, just a small, interesting story, a, a friend of mine who came uh, into voiceover through radio and lived in Idaho for a long time, and that's where she started her career, she, uh, be, before she joined the, this was some years ago. So before she joined the union, um, she had done uh, a commercial for a particular uh, exercise equipment. You know, it was a non non union radio commercial. And years later, she again before she joined the union, she she was listening to something on her computer uh, on a, like a Sirius XM channel, and this commercial came on. Her commercial came on that she had done years ago you know, and her boyfriend was listening to it and, she, and, and said, Hey, come, come here. Isn't this you? And she said, yeah, that, that is me. And he said, well, have you been paid again for, for this? You know, they're using your, they're mm -hmm. using your spot. And she said, Oh no, I haven't. I just got paid that one session fee. And, and, he, and she called me and said, you know, it just doesn't seem fair that I don't, that I'm not paid again when they're using my stuff. Um, and I just think it would be great if like all of us could kind of band together and really support each other so that people don't take advantage of us. And I was like, um, <laughs> that's the union, <laughs> you know, like it was just so, uh, it was so endearing to me, but it was like, yeah, that's why you join the union, you know, yeah. for the protections that are, that are built in. It's complex. I know. Um, and I think you find your way. You know, uh, I don't know how else to say that. I grew up in a union town, you know, and that was the only option, you know. And so um, it is tricky. There's no great hard and fast rule. But I would say if you are not union and you intend to do non-union work, don't join the union. If you mm -hmm. want to do union work, join the union and stick with it, hell or high water. You know, that's that's what I would say. And, and it, and it is, it is really an interesting place where we are because 
the yeah. high the high water is changing you know is is it high water like it's it's a flood of a flood of non-new york or is it low water that it's a you know the glaciers are melting in terms of union work yeah. what i also see um I've, I've had that same exact moment okay of going like uh yeah it's called the union <laughs> but 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 in that same discussion i think that it's really interesting <clears throat> you know once again i don't want to like it's weird being like the more venerable person in the like, oh, well, I'm, I guess I'm venerable because I've been doing this for a long time. Well, back in my day, right. um, you know, uh, the, 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 the little side, side note, <laughs> little side yeah. anecdote, we don't, we don't need that, that little story, but um, you know, that it has shifted. And when, when I came into it, the game was get into the union because that's where the work was you couldn't yes. get to the work unless you were part of the union then when that when that trout pond broke open the work is all over the place yes. um, a new generation i had a session yesterday um I, I won't say what it's for but um basically i got paid union rates to do polar bear sounds uh -huh. um I'll, that's all i'll say but um um the the people who were directing me were very young people yes. very young people um <clears throat> and they were great but if they don't know if they don't if they've come up in a new paradigm then yes for all this now what i see is happening in the in these years of transition right i think that there was sort of this two islands right there's union and there's non-union and everyone is like yeah man yeah man and uh, what i'm noticing is that as the union work has shifted and the non-union world has become educated um unified that people are talking to each other in different markets there's like a whole new vascular system yeah. that it's coming to a place where um you know I, I was saying this to somebody the other day like it's really hard to explain the walk to the mailbox to somebody as a way of making a living that's like you do a job and then years later you walk to the mailbox and you still get paid for that yeah. and you get all the benefits that that uh case talking about your health insurance and you know i i know i'm not eating cat food even if i never book a dub, another job right yeah unless the whole thing implodes which you know we'll we'll, we'll all worry about that but um so and unless you if you've never experienced that or that's not part of how you understand the world can work it's hard yeah. to explain but then when you get there you're like dude what <laughs> um yeah. so what i see happening is that there's this there's this place where things are coming together and bridges are being built yeah i um, agree yeah. and so and i think so then which whichever side of the bridge you are on not thinking of yourself as separate or adversarial but making sure if you are working non-union that you are aware of what union rates are and what that you're working with people who are who know what things are and what you should be getting paid for i've been noticing um i've been following a a a, a group that seems to be having great success on fiverr which is cool having great success and it kind of makes my brain go like Grr. um yeah. and so how do we how do we take it how do uh, not take advantage how do we become aware of what all the opportunities are and then what happens when we all say we understand this is what a rate should be yeah, and yeah. this is well, this is how we do things yeah um I'll tell you as well um um uh the, I, you know, doing union work uh, and all the new media that that's 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 come into play, um, like all, the animation work that I'm doing, which is which is union work, it is not the same structure as it was when there were four networks. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're doing if you're doing work for DreamWorks and and you're you're doing work for those, you know, sort of those those really prominent channels that are not network there's no, there is no residual structure right it's you, you get your session fee and then i think at a certain point i'm a little bit i'm not clear on the on the new on the new structure for the new contract that was just signed um for for animation but i think there's a secondary payment 
that comes at a certain level of success of the, of the show, of monetary success. But, but I am working probably five times as hard as I was in 1989, 1992. So, it, so it's different. I'm so grateful that it's union. Right, and that money is being contributed to my to my pension and health, um, but it is it's a different it's a different union, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's in the in that sense, right? Um, and so I kind of applaud the uh, the union, you know, for all its shortcomings, you know. And it's us, you know. I, the union is not separate from me. I am a, I'm a part of it, so they're my shortcomings too. But um, you know that, that that they're really still in the game. Of trying to trying to make work union, you know, trying to bring more work into the, into the fold, and and I think there's a piece of that that is really heavily influenced by the non-union world that that says, you know, here's all this work out here. I want to take it, you know, um, because it's a good rate, and it's it's, and yet I'm union and I can't, mm -hmm. you know. So there's this, there is a bridge. It's like I, I don't. I do, I agree with you that, that there's kind of, we have a lot to learn from each other, you know, and, and it's one of the things that I find so fascinating about VO Atlanta is that there's such a large population of people who aren't working in, uh, under the jurisdiction of the union, but my, my goodness, what successful careers they have, you know, and, and what business people they are, and they're so entrepreneurial, and they're, you know, far more creative in that regard than I ever have been, mm -hmm. you know, so... Um, so I do think that we have a lot to learn from each other. Um, and, and that is kind of, to me, is at the, is at the crux of our future together, <laughs> you know, um, that, that we continue to open our eyes and ears to each other um, to, to, to build bridges. You know, that's, that's kind of ultimately yeah. the, the hope, mm -hmm. I think. So. And then I think there's, there's this whole other um, FICOR is one is one solution, and then understanding what things you can convert to union, which in some ways some ways solve the problem, but actually in others doesn't. Actually, I think that that place of conversion is actually an interesting place where the bridges can be made, yeah. right? Because yeah. maybe someone doesn't understand that that's something you can do. That way, you get your pension and health they get their thing and yeah. that also there you know there might be something that you're yeah putting some some parameters on usage and things yeah. like that yeah. as well yeah. um yeah. has this been helpful questions answered um and again if you're feeling this um know that you're not alone everyone every day has to deal with these these choices and then how to get involved and um you know, I, I keep on finding myself going, how do we think about this differently? You know, I was, I was uh, hearing about how um, some of the um, uh, below the line unions work. And someone can say, I would like to be elect an electrician. I'm going to join the union and become an apprentice and right. then put in my time and do the diligence and do the work. And then that person becomes part of the union as they're doing the work and yeah. the resources are there to teach them how to do the work and you know, i'm like boy oh boy if we got everyone who wanted to be an actor to be part of the union <laughs> and yeah. then everybody you know it's like hmm, yeah. how can we be thinking about things differently um yeah, how, it's, how a it's a complicated topic and there is no you know no. de facto answer i i, yeah. I think it's it's we're we're in a bit of the wild west, and I think we're I think we're all going to make our way and look back historically and go that was an interesting time, yeah. <laughs> you know. So um, uh, I know um, Tim Tim Friedlander and Soundbox LA are a great resource if you do need to um, if you do have a job that you think could be converted. Um, uh -huh. They 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 create a they create a really great safe um, clear place for you to do that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Good, good, good. Let's see. How you know, just, just, yeah. I see a little question about FICOR and what, what that means. Oh, um, good, good. Just good. as it relates. So, mm -hmm. um, FICOR, F I dash C O R E, Financial Core is what it stands for. And, um, and it's an option that you can take if you're a union member, whereby you 
you cease to have any rights um, as, uh, as a member, if you will, except that you will keep your pension and health co contributions when you do work union jobs, but you don't have voting privileges. You can't attend any, uh, any of the workshops or anything um, that the union provides as, as assistance to, a, to an actor. Um, so you take a core status, you, you, you pay a, a base rate of dues, um, but you, you kind of cease to have your rights as a, as a member, your voice, you, you kind of lose your voice uh, as, a, as a member of the union. So, uh, so that, that's essentially what that, what that means. So. Yeah. yeah, good, good, good asking those, those questions, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 Let's see where we're at for time. Oh, we've got we've got time for we've got some some more questions. Like where was incredible? Yeah, we got time. Um, good. 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 Let's see. Um, okay. What did you talk about at VOA? It made a little. <laughs> I'd well, for a little little I, synopsis of that. Yeah, I did the keynote uh, um, this past year in March at VOA Atlanta, mm -hmm. and you know, I just kind of told my story <laughs> of, about my my journey through. Um, not just voiceover, but kind of my life and, and, um, and all the ways that my personal life, you know, how it has an effect on what your work is. And, um, and really, I, I kind of essentially talked about the importance of um, staying the course and willingness to reinvent and mm -hmm. the, the, the importance of keeping relationships and friendships yeah. and, and a sense of, you know, kind of be, beginner's mind, like, um, and just a willingness not to ever, you know, sit on your laurels, you know, that there's, you know, Rob Paulson, who, who will be the um, keynote speaker in 2020, he just tells this really great, you know, snippet. He's, you know, he's an Emmy winner for his role as Pinky and Pinky in the Brain. And I, I love when he says, you know, uh, an Emmy and four bucks will get you a latte. <laughs> you know, it's, even a guy like him looks and says, I gotta, I gotta make my way. I'm gonna go, you know, he mm -hmm. auditioned after he won an Emmy, you know, yeah. he's, he's still auditioning mm -hmm. and still auditions, you know, it's, it's changed a bit for him now because he's sort of created a, a, a different piece of his career. But, um, but I, I, that, that, that's essentially what I talked about and, and the need to really be who we are, you know, to really know what your worldview is. <laughs> Uh, who you love, what, you know, the importance of the relationships that you have in your life mm -hmm. and cultivating love and acceptance of yourself and of others around you. And that, that, that really is what makes us unique. You know, that, that, um, that we are all, we all have particular gifts that no one else possesses and to become aware of those gifts and to embrace those things and to embrace our differences. Um, and by being yourself, you really blaze a unique trail. And mm -hmm. instead of trying to emulate someone else or, yeah. you know, follow another person's path. Um, and that, you know, that each of us is valuable, you know. Yeah. And, and uh, so that, that's, that's essentially what it was. And for all the comments I see, I, I thank you so much for, <laughs> for your kindness. And I'm sorry I made you cry, but I... <laughs> It was a good yeah. cry. <laughs> but, but you um, know that 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 all everything you're saying is like that's that's the that's the heart of the dojo. The really you know the the dojo is here. The the whole mission of the dojo is to align you with the power of your voice. Yeah, exactly. Your voice, and so everything that we do, the vehicle, the vehicle is voiceover. Yeah. what we're doing when we do all those auditions every day with great faith and we we you know um navigate n negotiate those rapids of whatever class thing is coming up to the next level that we're doing and that's always the next thing um it's all serving this it's taking you on this journey that you are aligned with the power of your voice you your voice makes a difference you knowing what your voice is in the world is what it's about yeah yeah and um oh shoot oh oh it's and it's kind of like you know in the booth in the booth it's kind of summed up like this we actors tend to ask ourselves what do they want <laughs> what do they want 
you know, and we read the spec. Oh, is that, that's what they want. I'm going to become that. I'm going to try to become that. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I've realized I don't, if I got the copy from my agent or wherever I got it from, if, if it was from a demo or what have you, I got the copy, which means they want to hear me. Mm -hmm. so, so rather than ask, what do they want? It's more a question of what can I bring? Exactly. Um, exactly. And if you approach it from that level, either the job is yours or it's not. And, mm -hmm. and it isn't about whether or not you conformed yourself to a particular spec. It's whether or not they listened and said, oh, that person just brought this thing to life, you know? And so if we can focus on what we have to offer rather than can I contort myself into this narrow little spec that really means nothing, you know, the spec sort of means nothing. Yeah. Um, then I think we start to have a chance at, at really bringing our unique person to the job to, mm -hmm. to the audition you know and, and if you book it they'll direct you right. you know they'll, they'll they'll direct you how they want it if you right. will so and, uh, and oh, oh go ahead no no that is yeah. and yeah. and the core the the big uh, taking that to the next level what what if there is no they there's only we. If you walk into right. you walk into every audition, every session, every every meeting with your agent, every every interaction, every colleague that you meet, there is no they. There's only we. It's not like oh, there's the, those are the people that are working, and I'm. It's like no, there's only we. And yeah. then everything you're doing becomes collaborative. How are you part yeah. of the solution? You're already included because it's we. And, yeah. and then you don't have any separation and then we're all in it together. And, and so that, that just opens it up. Every, and, okay. In the, in the, you know, in the time in Los Angeles, when we used to all, when, when we didn't audition from home, but went to casting places, you know, I would, I would go to an audition of the voice caster and I, there I would be with 10 to 15 other women, you know, who are my age range. And we all kind of, and it was like, mm -hmm. I knew everybody in the room could do the job. Every, every one of us. And so it was just, we all had this attitude of like, well, whose turn is it? You know, and, and that's, how, that's how it works because we could, we could all do the job. So there was far more a sense of camaraderie and, le and less a sense of I'm in this by myself. But, but yeah. we all knew, it's like, here we are, we're all, this is our job to show up at this audition and maybe it'll be my turn and maybe it'll be yours, you know? Yeah, so, yeah um, exactly. Keep that kind of thing in mind, right? Yeah. So. And, and just to, to, there's a couple of questions about agents. Um, uh -huh. A simple, I just want to make this super tight because we need to wrap up. Um, but um, so uh, Stephen asks, what's the best way to get an agent? And then Sandy, you're asking, how do you step into a next tier of agents? And I think the answer is, is really a um, part of that we, right? So rather than looking as an agent as like something like, oh, I wish I had an agent, if only that agent would look my way um, of going, I'm driving the car, I've built this awesome car, I know where I'm going, I'm really clear on where I want to be, who am I going to bring onto my team to sit in the back seat and help me navigate? Who has the most f fuel cars, cards, who knows the shortcuts, who um, has the places where we can stay? Like, who is going to help me driving my car get to where i'm going and then that's a whole nother perspective right so whether you're going you're you're starting to build your first relationship with your first agent or um or t stepping into a new a new realm uh, and in terms of stepping into new realm if you're booking in this realm then just go forward and say hi i'm booking because that's mostly what agents look for. <laughs> you know, like, hi, I'm I'm booking, I'm making money. Um, would yeah. you like to make some money with me? Because I think I think there's a potential that we could make even more money together if yeah. you're interested. And suddenly yeah. it's like, oh, okay. And then who do you want to work with? Right. You know, if if and if you look at it like a relationship, um, yes, it um, is. Hi, I think I'd like a boyfriend. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you go like, oh, uh, okay. Uh, I could be your boyfriend. Yeah. Um, no, people are like, "Hi, I'm ready for a relationship." You, you know, yeah, so yeah. so that's that's a great way to. And I mean, speaking very pr practically too, I think 
having um, a demo that really is a reflection of who you are mm -hmm. as opposed to a, uh, a, a giant amalgam of all the things you can do. You know, it's more like, who are you? Again, who are you? Um, uh, is, is important. Um, I think we tend to spend too much money on demos, uh, as, especially when we're starting out. Um, I think, I think the simpler, the better, the more, the more a demo really represents you. Demos are really the realm of getting an agent because once you, <laughs> in the, in the, in the coastal markets, I, I would mm -hmm. say, because we audition for everything and it's very rare that somebody will cast you anymore based on your demo. So a demo is really a tool to, to find an agent. Um, but, and, and I know de demos are a whole different subject, but, um, but I, it's a combination of a good accurate demo. That's not fancy schmancy, but that, but that represents who you are, um, a, a willingness to be a team player um, mm -hmm. and to work with and to realize that 90% of your uh, career is up to you and 10% goes to an agent, which is why that's the commission we pay them, um, right? And that you really, it really is a team, a team effort. So how motivated are you? How much do you wanna work? How willing are you, uh, what work in terms of work at the craft of it, of getting better at it all the time? You know, th those kinds of things are, are super important. And the rest of it, how to get an agent, it's kind of nebulous. It's really hard to know. I, I, think, I, I think when the time is right, opportunities present themselves, you know, and, and then, there is no one perfect agent either. It, you know, it's never the case. That, it, oh, no, it's, 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 a, it's like finding, yeah. it's finding your significant other. It's like finding yeah. the right college for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. And also I think, I think a real, a really the most powerful way to segue to a relationship with someone who's going to be on your team is through relationships. So how yes. do you build those, you know, if, if we all have that friend, if they called and said, hey, work with this person, you'd be like, absolutely, hi, come on over, come, come, yes. So how do we build those relationships that are those, how do you get it cut to the chase, right? Because yes. if I build a relationship with this person who can make one call to this agent and they go, oh, uh, yeah, can you come in right now? Um, that cuts to the chase, right? Rather than standing in line to get tickets to the concert. Yeah. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, so lots, lots to go there. Um, guys, we, we, we're just at 11 o'clock. So I want to wrap up and honor everyone's time. Um, we've got a couple of other questions. Um, uh, I don't know if you have a few minutes, Kay, that you want to type in you. afterwards. We can I do thought, that. Uh, I actually thought we were going to 11:15, so I. I oh, okay. So, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap up. I actually I actually need to rule, but I'll keep this. I'll keep it. Well, I'll I'll see if I can type type in questions as well. So we're gonna wrap with these questions, but um, we might have a, a couple minutes to do this sure. afterwards. Um, in terms of uh, how people keep in touch with UK and what you've got going on, uh, how if you want to type in. How yeah. people keep in touch and um, uh, what I'm gonna, resources just, you have for people. I'm typing this in the um, chat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there is my email address. Mm -hmm. um, Kbess at mac.com. You're totally welcome to um, contact me anytime. And if there's a question in here that didn't get answered that you want me to answer, just send it to me in an email, and I'm totally happy to uh, to respond. Um, because I, you know, there, there's some great, like, short sort of things here, and I'm, I'm, I'm totally, totally happy to answer those questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, I do, uh, you can, you can find me on my website as well, which is kbest.com. Um, I do coaching. Um, I do, um, I do, you know, sets of coaching and, you know, one, one-offs of coaching. Um, I do audition-specific coaching, if you'd like. Um, and, and, and really, I'm, I'm just available to answer any question that you might have. I'm, I'm really, really happy to, to do that. Um, and that's, that's how. So kbess at mac.com and then my website, k, kbess.com. And uh, uh, yeah. So, and can you tell yeah. us a little bit about, about uh, Beehive? And I know you sure. said it's, it's been in a slower process, but is, is there ways that archives are available? Or oh, oh, it's the... Um, 
the uh, the podcast is still up and available at uh, on iTunes. You you can also find it on through my website. There's a there's a there's a drop down where, where you can go, and it's also available at uh, the Beehive. Dot com. I think the beehivepodcast.com. I think that's what it is. But but if you forget that, as I clearly have, um, <laughs> you, you can find it um, through my through my website, kbest.com. Um, yeah, and I it's it's been a while since since I've recorded a new one, and that happened. You know, I just kind of got busy, which is a <laughs> blessing. <laughs> but but I realize it's like this this podcast is sort of in in suspension at the moment, but I still have about 30, 30 some episodes that are available that have a lot of um, interesting um, uh, conversations and a, and a lot of wisdom from a lot of uh, women mm-hmm. in voiceover who've been at it and who have gone through, you know, sort of asked all these questions and lived out their answers. So, mm-hmm. um, so it's fun. And sometimes we drink wine and, and <laughs> interesting. So <laughs> the lend. good, good, good. Yeah. And um, then, um, in terms of, in terms of stuff that's happening at the dojo, um, first of all, let, let's see. So there's, there's always something for everyone, wherever you are on your journey, there's, there's some place that we can meet you and take you to where you want to be. Um, for everybody, um, put December 15th on your calendar because that's the dojo holiday pajama party, uh, December 15th, 7 to 10 p.m. We'll, we'll be getting invites uh, invites out um, through our email. Um, obviously, you're on our email list because you're here. Um, but uh, if you're in L.A., uh, come, come join us. And I'm figuring out how to maybe have people be able to join us virtually. It might be an ambitious, crazy Tish idea, but um, we work with people all over the country and increasingly around the world, so we we are all in this together. Um, if you are on the beginning of your journey, um, the You Should Do voiceover intensives are coming up in January. We do one live in LA, um, a weekend intensive, and we also do a six-week virtual, so wherever you are, you can get that comprehensive overview and little taste. Um, and if you're on your journey, we have the full mystery to mastery program, which is like going to full training for voiceover. Like if you were a, a boxer, we'd go into full training. And again, we meet you wherever you are and take you the rest of the way. Um, looks like there's a lot of working pros on here. Um, if you're interested in talking more about the nth degree, we'll be picking up back in January. Um, and, um, and then we have the VO Dojo Pro Fight Club which is um, our working pro workout that brings together top-notch talent with the decision makers who hire us. Um, we call it a fiercely friendly face-off that turns the audition process transparent. So, okay, I want you to come play for sure. Um, but that, that is happening. Demo, repped, and booking are the criteria to play. And then uh, you can audit the virtual one. We have one live and one virtual each month. So um, definitely come check that out. Um, I'm always available to talk to you about anything. Um, sign up, you can sign up for a voiceover once over uh, call um, www.thevodojo.com is where you reach, uh, reach me. And um, also um, if you know anybody who is just, just starting out, or if you wanna know a little bit more about dojo and how we work and sort of our, our approach. Um, next week, we're doing a, a one hour webinar called The Actor's Secret Weapon, voiceover, The Actor's Secret Weapon, why every performer should have voiceover in their money making arsenal. So if you, if that sounds interesting to you, it's a great little way to, to get a sense of what we're doing here. And then um, if you know anybody else who's an actor or a stand up or a singer or a, or a um, improviser, um, that should be doing this or a musician even, um, that should be doing this. It's a great thing. So that's on the website. And, um, we do this the first Wednesday of every month. And, uh, that's, I think that's, a, there's always something going on at the dojo. Um, great, great questions today, guys. Love that you're all here. Um, love to have you back and look forward to talking with you and hearing your voices. And, um, Kay, thank you so much yeah. for being here. I, um, I want to say um hi to becky i know becky she's on my podcast Mm -hmm. a while so hello becky um hi linda nice to see you too Mm -hmm. pilar um Mm -hmm. thank you so much for your kind words about (laughs) about uh my keynote and uh it's just really great to 
to see all of you here. So I, I do hope I do hope to hear from you. I hope you'll hope you'll yeah. help I didn't answer a question. I'm, I'm yeah. Happy. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna wrap up, but thank you all for being here. Um, look forward to next month. Be well, everybody. Hope to hear from you. Ciao.